let me welcome all of you to the fourth lecture of the drilling and blasting technology course. Uh, in this lecture, we will continue our rock formation, which we are discussing in the last class also. So, first retrospect the last class. In last few classes, we are being introduced with the rock, uh, how it is for, uh, the rock is formed uh, forming the earth crust, and we have uh, already understood that the our activities are limited to the outer earth crust that is called CL, and also the CL which is uh, uh, up to the 25 kilometer of the earth crust, we are limited to few kilometers only, and our deepest excavation is within the uh, 4 kilometer of the earth crust. So, that is very very in the super uh, uh, in the surface part of the earth we are only carrying out. So, rock is our excavation medium which we are carrying out and we are trying to understand the rock and rock mass as our medium. So, we in this context we are trying to understand the geology of the earth also. So, our learning objective at the present stage is that we should understand the rock geology, we should understand the different rock properties and we should understand the rock and rock mass how they are differing. So, let us first start understanding what is rock geology. So, geology basically geo means earth, logos means knowledge or study. So, geology basically the study of earth. And the science of geology is generally divided in three sub discipline one is physical, another is historical, another is environmental. So, the physical geology basically is studying the earth material and the process, historical geology basically studying the origin development of the earth. So, basically the stratigraphy etcetera are basically the part of historical geology and environmental geology is carrying out with the inter uh, relationship of the humans and the earth. So, basically this stratigraphy part is also important and physical part which is the uh, study of the earth material and its processes are very very important while we are considering the rock as a medium of our excavation. So, basically earth made of rocks and minerals and let us understand what is a mineral. Basically, mineral is a homogeneous naturally occurring solid and generally inorganic substance with a definable chemical composition and an orderly internal arrangement of atoms. So, basically minerals are the material which we can describe with a chemical formula and we can say that the properties of a mineral are more or less similar. Rocks are the earth material basically that is made of minerals. So, basically a number of minerals gathered together to form a rock. So, mineral is a part of rock, a rock may comprise a number of minerals, but mineral is having a specified chemical formula and it is having the chemical composition and it is having some particular properties. So, basically while a mining engineer is trying to excavate something they search for minerals. So, there are thousands of different types of minerals and uh, they are of uh, they are produced of from different activities, but it has been found more than 95 percent of the earth crust is igneous rock and basically this igneous rocks uh, contains only few minerals. The other minerals are uh, available with the other types of rocks. So, let us see some of the uh, uh, rock forming minerals. This rock forming igneous rock forming minerals are basically quartz, feldspar, mica, pyroxene, amphibolite, olivine. So, these are the main rock forming minerals which are available in the earth crust and basically the properties of those rocks are depend, uh, dependent on, on the percentage of these minerals on that. So, other 
common rock forming minerals are also available calcite, clays, mag uh, magnetite, pyrite, talc these are also available, but major major are the above one the lower are the uh, very rarely or mostly available in the earth crust only. So, minerals are easily identifiable because of their definite different properties. There are some physical properties, there are some specified chemical properties. So, most of the physical properties which are used to identify the uh, minerals are X-ray diffraction, then electronic microscope, then the uh, GM counter, those uh, common uh, in, in physical instruments are used for identifying the minerals, uh, most of the times we carry out this one. So, let us see what are the different mineral properties using which we can identify the mineral. Say first is the color, in most of the cases we identify the mineral because of the color only. Say coal is very very black, we can identify the formation of a coal amount to sandstone bed by uh, 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 from the color of the coal itself. Similarly, gold chalcopyrite both are of golden color and their occurrence can be easily identified because of their color golden color only. So, this is basically most commonly color is utilized as, as the most physical um, most uh, common distinguishable a property of the for the minerals. In most of the cases we identify the mineral bed, mineral vein from the our uh, from the colors from our by our eye only. The next property which is very very important is the streak. Why this color or streak I am telling side by side you? The main reason is that often the color may be same of two different mineral, but the streak may be different. What is streak? Streak basically when you scratch the mineral with a streaking plate the uh, color of the line is called as the streak. So, one very common example of use of streak is the moment you are trying to distinguish between the chalcopyrite and the gold ore that is oxide. So, if you have a streak of the chalcopyrite and the oxide, you will find the gold ore is giving you the golden streak whereas, the chalcopyrite give you the black streak. So, that is why the streak is different though the mineral is having the similar color. So, streak may be one identifying property of the mineral in which we can use. Uh, luster means the uh, you can you can see the uh, glaziness of the material you can say. So, basically it may have metallic, it may have non-metallic, it may have uh, adamantine type whichever it is uh, you can have different type of luster. In fact, very often copper, copper ore are also identified because of its luster because it is a very very glazy metallic lustres are observed in the copper ore. So, like that way luster is another very very important property which is commonly used for identifying the mineral. Crystallization is also another property which can be used for identifying the minerals. And another is very very important is the hardness, there is a hardness scale which is called Mo hardness scale, where the material which material is hard that can be identified. Basically hardness is also another measure of the grain of the mineral. The moment a mineral comprises of the grain which is of very hard and angular that shows the hardness much much more in the hardness scale. So, this angular and hard grain material most of the time they uh, arise uh, they, uh, uh, they, uh, they were occurred because of the high temperature uh, uh, ignition rocks. So, like that way the material is becoming hard and hard for the for for their grain sizes only. So, in the most more hardness scale the lower talc is considered as the 1, gypsum is considered as the 2, calcite is as 3, uh, fluorite as 4, 
apatite as 5, orthoclase as 6, quad 7, topage 8, coramdam 9 and the most hardest material considered is diamond as 10. So, in between the some other things are there like uh, say uh, nail is considered of, uh, of about the hardness of 2.5, okay. steel plate is considered about the hardness of 6.5. So, like that way there are some other common objects of the are there which is having the different hardness parameters. But if we are having some material with identifying their hardness scale, hardness in the hardness scale, we can detect which type of material it is. So, the hardness is another very, very important parameter which is used, uh, used for identifying the mineral. Specific gravity of the mineral are more or less similar. Generally, specific gravity we use to identify the different mineral. In fact, a number of minerals are very, very are of very high density, and those minerals occurrences are identified from their weight only. If say like chromite ore, magnetite ore, these ore are very very of high density. So the moment we get a rock of high density we can try to search out the, the probability of uh, the having mag, it's, it is of becoming magnetite or it is of becoming chromite. In fact, a number of uh, cases we use gravity method to identify the occurrence of those chromites and magnetites. Apart from that fracture, the mineral breaks in uh, is no consistent uh, manner, those fractures are also identifiable mineral property. Cleavages are also there to identify the uh, mineral uh, mineral from its. There are three types of orthogonal cleavages are uh, uh, observed in the mineral. So, like that way, different aspects are there, physical properties are there from which we can identify the mineral apart from the chemical compositions, which can be tested from the chemical testings. So, from the chemical testing, we can get the idea about the mineral, but to reduce the chemical testing cost, physical testing should be carried out ahead of that. In fact, chemical testing uh, will give us the idea about the percentage of some particular element in that mineral also can be determined. So, basically rock is the aggregate of minerals which are naturally occurring substance and having a fixed chemical formula the minerals are having, but rock is the aggregate of different composition of those minerals and with the percentage of minerals in that rock, the rock behavior is basically controlled. Some minerals are strong resistive to deterioration and formed rocks of similar properties and other hand some minerals are of softer in nature and has formed the rock of weaker properties. So, that is by that way different rocks, different rocks are of different uh, compositions and maybe with the variations in the compositions the properties are varying. In fact, there is a little bit difference into the rock and rock mass which is very very important for our rock excavation purpose. Say a, an intact rock piece is called rock and whenever the rock is existing inside the earth crust it is called rock mass. So, intact rock is defined in engineering term as a rock containing no significant fracture and it can be used separately in the laboratory for the testing. So, that is called intact rock, but whenever the rock is of some fractures, some other geological impurities, some heterogeneities, some anisotropic tropiness. So, in those cases the rock is called rock mass. In fact, the behavior of a rock and behavior of a rock mass is entirely different. For if you are considering our uh, rock excavation or drilling and blasting in which our rock is a medium, in that case we have to consider the rock mass not the rock. So, suppose a, an intact rock may exhibit a strength compressive strength of say 60 mega Pascal, but whenever 
that rock is existing with a number of cracks, number of fractures, number of fold, uh, faults. In those cases, it may be possible that same rock is not exhibit a compressive strength of 60 mega Pascal, but it exhibits a much much lower uh, stress. R rock may be of very hard in nature, but whenever it is associated with fractures etcetera, our drilling type may be different, our blasting type may be different. The reason is that as some explosive is uh, giving the energy shock energy to the rock and the rock is say fractured, rock mass is say fractured, in those cases the dissipation of that shock wave will be entirely different or the shock wave utilization is very will be very very lost in those cases than the intact rock where the rock is intact no fracture is there. So, like that way rock mass property is the most important part whenever you are considering the drilling and blasting technology not the intact rock properties. However, some of the intact rock properties are utilized as the rock mass property, but because they are not to be measured in the rock mass condition like say compressive strength, tensile strength those strength properties are not possible to be measured in the in situ condition. So, for those cases those properties of the rock are utilized as the rock mass properties. However, rock mass acted differently from uh, uh, than a rock in the in situ condition. So, rock mass basically includes joint fracture cracks and other geological uh, discontinuities, but rock does not have this rock is considered as the uh, continuous homogeneous isotropic whereas, rock mass is an isotropic material in homogeneous anisotropic non-linear in, 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 in non-elastic material. So, in geologic term rock can be considered as particulate substance such as sand clay particle or in large form of mountains, tectonic plates, planetary cores etcetera. Rock can be classified in basically three groups igneous rock, sedimentary rock, metamorphic rock. So, basically igneous rock is the rock which is directly coming out from the magma in the molten stage then became cold down and in after the cooling that exhibit as a strong rock material. So, that is called igneous rock. Whenever the igneous rock is subjected to some change because of the atmospheric activities, because of the human activities, because of some other uh, metasomatic activities or may be some another igneous activities in those cases it is converted igneous rock is converted to the sedimentary rock or to the metamorphic rock. That means, the moment one basic igneous rock that means, once it is uh, be, uh, coming out from the magma solidified became the igneous rock, once that rock is subjected to the temperature and pressure that may converted to the sedimentary rock or to the metamorphic rock. So, this is the basic three basic variations of the rock igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. Uh, we will continue this lecture into the next class where we will understand what is the igneous rock, what is the sedimentary rock, what is the metamorphic rock and how they behave. Thank you.